Welcome to the EEV Blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 27. There are very few of my blogs that have generated more interest and more feedback than the one I did quite some time ago on uh, engineering job interview tips. And I keep getting asked all the time, Dave, do you have any more interview tips to help me out at an engineering, electronics engineering job interview? I'm a graduate. Can you help me out? Do you have any more tips? You bet I do. The first tip, never ever say, I don't know. If they ask you a question and you don't know the answer, don't just say, I don't know and leave it at that. It's crazy. Say, I'll find out. You know, give me two seconds on the internet, I'll find it out or let me go home and I'll research it from my personal library. You know, whatever. It, but never say, I don't know. You've got to show that you actually, uh, you know, are capable of, you know, of researching things, finding out an answer if you don't know, not just shrugging your shoulders and going, I don't know. Not only don't be late for the interview, but be early, be really early, because uh, often uh, the people who are going to interview you, especially, you know, engineer guys like me, they haven't actually, you know, they haven't often haven't got time to uh, research you beforehand. They'll scramble it in the last five minutes. They'll just grab your resume and they'll flick through and go, oh, I've got to ask him some questions. And they'll do that in the last five minutes. If you turn up 15, 20 minutes early, you're going to catch them off guard. It's going to put them off their game and they won't be prepared. Now, here's a really good tip for you. Most uh, interviews will take place in some sort of uh, meeting room and there'll almost always be a whiteboard in there. And the best thing you can do is don't just sit there in your chair and answer questions. Go, oh, I'll show you on the whiteboard. Get up, go over to the whiteboard and start drawing, you know, circuits, draw graphs, draw, you know, tables, you know, pros and cons tables, do whatever. And that will impress the heck out of them. Hardly anyone does that. It shows that you have really good you know, uh, engineering ability, you're confident and that, you know, you, you can run meetings and you can at least get up there and not be nervous and, and talk about stuff. Make sure you're prepared for the two big questions. And these typically aren't asked by the engineering guys. I'll be asked by HR people or top managers. Engineering guys don't ask wanky questions like this. And the questions are, number one, what is your, uh, you know, what is your best trait. What's, you know, what's the best thing about you? And you need to have an answer. I always answer my enthusiasm. And, you know, <laughs> because I'm enthusiastic about electronics. It's what I do. It's what I love. And, you know, make sure you have a good answer to that. A good, simple answer. Don't just waffle on. And the big question everyone hates, everyone dreads this, is what's your biggest weakness? Or, you know, tell us a weakness that you have. And don't answer the question. It's a trick question. It's a stupid question. It's asked by these uh, uh, human resources and manager type people because they're trained to ask stupid questions like that. You usually won't get it from an engineer like me. And well, you know, the typical answer, the textbook answer that you're told to give is, um, you know, any, possibly an example of how you've had a weakness in the past and you've worked to overcome it and yada 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 and that's that's boring that's the answer they want to hear i reckon put them off their game and you know give them it's a stupid question give them a stupid answer so i answer my enthusiasm that's my greatest weakness and my greatest positive thing and you know it really puts them off their game and they don't know what to say it's 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 terrific you know don't appear to be one of these stuck up types like oh my harvard mba has taught me to always critically analyze my weaknesses and turn them into positives something like that it's like get out of here you know you're a bore we're not gonna hire you we want someone with attitude i should also mention the type of people you're likely to uh be interviewed by and the types of interviews you're likely to have the first one a lot of jobs go through these recruitment consultants and i've mentioned them before they're useless they're a load of garbage but a lot of companies 
use them and try and avoid meeting with them if you can because they're they're just slick salesmen that's all they are they're just looking to make their commission so they're just going to waste your time by getting to go in there and meet them but typically they're you know they're not technical at all some of them might have you know might have engineering degrees but they they've never practiced it they have no idea they're just hopeless okay so they're easy to impress you know bring your stuff along put lots of technical stuff on the resume and you know and just act confident and you're going to impress them now once you actually get into the company for an interview you can have anyone anywhere from say one to typically three interviews it's pretty rare to have more than three and uh, the first one might typically be with just just a human resources person a HR person uh, it goes under many different names you know but um, these people are totally non-technical they know usually they know nothing about the business at all they're just there to you know in some admin capability to determine your personality and things like that they might give you a psychological test big companies work on these crap psychological exams or they, they just basically want to see if you tick the boxes and if you're a nice guy or not that's it they're, they're very easy to impress just be enthusiastic polite confident and show them all your stuff bring your stuff and you'll stand out a mile and they'll give you the big tick and you'll go to the next interview now the main interview is uh, usually performed by uh, you know a head of an engineering um, team or a head of a group or you know just a just an engineer like me or a senior engineer or something like that and these guys are going to ask you technical questions and you know really you've got to be prepared but you know things I've mentioned before about being confident getting up there on the whiteboard and doing stuff bringing stuff you've designed make sure you never turn up empty-handed golden rule of engineering interviews always bring stuff but you've got to be confident you've got to be a nice guy don't rock the boat too much but answer all their questions and never say I don't know the engineering type uh, interviewers are looking for what you know for what you can do they don't really care about your personality your qualifications or anything else they'll overlook your quirks engineers like me we're quirky you know that's that's just what we are so they're not gonna look at things like that they're just gonna go is he a nice guy does he know his stuff can he do the job bingo we'll take him there also might be a uh, third interview or by a more senior uh, person in the company it might be the CEO you know themselves or you know a vice president or you know the director of engineering or something like that and they'll be looking for you know things like are you going to be a good stable employee are you going to be a yes man you know are you going to rock the boat they don't like people who rock the boat often so you know these people you have to be a bit more conservative with you can't uh, you know you can't show them that you're too cocky so you've got to tone it down a bit for these top level managers and you've got to you know you've got to tell them what they want to hear really you can't tell the truth some people have asked well I'm just a graduate I don't have anything to show I don't you know I've got nothing to bring along I've got you know nothing to put on my resume well my answer to that is bullshit you know I'm not gonna hire you then I'm gonna hire the person who comes along and has shown me stuff if you don't don't just rely on what you've done at school what you've done at uni forget it go out there design and build something I don't care what it is bring something along and I'm gonna be impressed and I'm gonna hire you over the guy who just got you know got the university medal or something like that I don't want that guy I want the enthusiastic guy who shows he can do stuff it's easy to create your own stuff I mean look at me I'm doing this you know this silly video blog yeah it might be silly you think I'm gonna put it on my resume you are damn right I am because it's something that I've done it's something you know about electronics and it's possibly the only electronics video blog on the planet some people might think it's you know it's really stupid but other people might think wow that's really great this guy must really know his stuff we're gonna hire him absolutely here's a good tip why don't you go and get yourself 
published. There's nothing cooler to put on your resume than you've been published in some industry journal. It's you know it's not hard to actually design a, a you know a little project and, and get it published. It's you know there's still quite a few magazines out there that will publish projects from anyone. Another thing you can do to put on your resume it might be simple, but say that you read forums. You're, you're a member of all these electronics forums and you read them and you contribute and you learn stuff. You know, that's going to set you apart. If you're going for, say, you know, if you're writing firmware, if you're going for a software job, make sure you bring along your notebook with your source code you can show off in the programs you've written. You haven't written any since uni? Well, damn well go out there and write some.